Clear Lake, California is like stepping into an after-school special on the dangers of meth. <laughs> it's full of retired crackers and crank labs. All around town, streets are teeming with tweakers and deadbeat welfare moochers. It's kind of like The Walking Dead if all the zombies were high and wanted to chat. Ouch! Damn! <laughs> I've read a lot of reviews about a place, but I don't think I've ever heard it put quite like that before. It wasn't until day eight on my California road trip that I made it out to the countryside to Clear Lake. Up to this point, it had been funky desert towns and a bunch of big cities that are in some level of getting worse. But this is different. I'd heard about Clear Lake a lot. A lot of people have told me it's the worst place to live in California. Since I was in the area, I figured it was time to see it. And boy, was the trip worth it. Oh, Clear Lake. Well, I don't know if it's as clear as it used to be. The day I was here, it didn't look too bad. But there's water issues here, just like there are in a lot of the state. Some say it might be the most mercury-polluted lake in the world. So maybe they should call it Mirror Lake. This is actually the largest freshwater lake in the state. It's even the oldest lake in North America, they say. Clear Lake used to be a nice resort town, but now that the lake water isn't worth a shit anymore, a lot of the tourism's gone away. I don't know if too many people are living the lake life here anymore. I was told not to go near the lake because of the pollution and the nasty algae. I mean, there's signs as soon as you drive into this place warning you about the water issues here. I was also told not to go near the tweakers because, well, because, but we'll get to that in a minute. So where is Clear Lake anyway? It's here in Lake County, a rural area kind of spread out on the lower edge of Northern California. It's really isolated in this part of the state, mostly mountains and agriculture all around. Unless you're from here, you wouldn't know that a lot of Northern California is rural and mountainous and less liberal. I think this is the best part of the state, to be honest. A long time ago, there were Native Americans all around these valleys, but you know how that went. White folks started moving in around the time of the gold rush. You don't really hear too much about this part of the state. I could name all the big cities in Lake County, and you wouldn't have heard of any of them. Clear Lake is by far the biggest city out here. There's about 16,000 people here, and most of the place looks like they don't want to be bothered. Now, usually when I visit a place, I look at different street view images to see where I should go. Just about every pin I dropped was in the middle of a dusty road with trailers, so it didn't really matter where I went. So I just drove around all day I was here to see what I could see. A lot of people don't quite understand this region of California. As you move away from the coast, you get into more redneck, conservative land. All over the Central Valley and up into much of Northern California is completely different than what you see on TV, people. A lot of California is extremely liberal. This part of the state is not that. There's a lot of Trump up here. There's also a ton of drugs up here. From what I hear, drugs are the biggest currency in a lot of this land. And sadly, drugs are only one part of the problem. One nonprofit just published what were called shocking health statistics that show just how bad it is here. Lake County is one of the most disadvantaged regions in the nation, the report says. These communities are isolated both geographically and economically, and they have high levels of unemployment, poverty, chronic illness, and drug and alcohol abuse far beyond state averages. Wow, what a report. It goes on to talk about suicides and drug deaths and how kids smoke and how a lot of people are overweight and generally unhealthy. Seems like every stat you look at is terrible here. Another recent story came out that called the place California's impoverished Riviera. Jeez. 
Poor Lake County. It's impoverished and it ranks dead last of California's 58 counties for health and well-being. Another report called Clear Lake the fifth poorest city in California, where about 30% of the population lives in poverty. It's also the largest poorest place to live in the state. The average household here earns about $36,000 a year, which goes nowhere in California anymore. However, as you can see, the cost of living is minimal. This is by far the cheapest place to live in the state, where the average cost of a home is about two hundred dollars But that's changing, because... Believe it or don't, a lot of Bay Area refugees are coming this way. You know, people who have been priced out and are sick of the BS happening on the coast. You can't blame them. There's a lot of land for sale here. All over town, there's lots listed for 15 k apiece. I guess there's a lot of room to keep adding in all those trailers. But it's California. There might not be a trailer shortage, but there's a housing shortage here. And the problem's worse because there's been a lot of fires in the area. So there's more homeless here than ever before. And apparently there isn't a mental health agency here, so a lot of people go untreated. I went by the Behavioral Health Center in town, and it kind of looked like it hadn't been used for a while. Not gonna lie. One out of five people here are single moms with kids. Half the people rent. And welfare is a big deal here, clearly. Thrift stores and food pantries are a big help for a lot of these people. And there's a big dispute with the power company because the energy costs are double what they used to be here. That sucks. And the roads, my God. Caution, unpaved road. Oh, it's paved. It's just not paved well. Most of the roads I drove on were the absolute worst roads I've ever driven on. If these even qualify for roads, this is definitely the most unfilmable place in the country. Some of the potholes just about knocked the camera out of my hands. Jesus. And it's like this in 90% of town. This could be the trailer park of California. Almost half the roads here aren't paved, including dozens of miles of residential streets. I think I read somewhere that the city got 20 million bucks to pave these roads, but only paved two of them. No idea where the rest of the money went for that, but these roads sure could use a paving. Crime is bad here, but it's not San Bernardino bad. There's robberies and assaults. There's random shootings and stabbings. Lots of shit gets stolen. I hear the place is overrun with tweakers that'll steal your shit and then help you look for it. My God. A while back, Clear Lake got national attention because a speed freak killer said he buried 14 bodies up here? What in the... As soon as I got there, there was a big fight in the park between a bunch of kids, right across from the police station. This was on a Sunday morning, so I guess they weren't in church. I don't really think there's a lot to do around here for kids. I don't think there's a lot to do around here for adults either. So it's not surprising that I'd see people walking around who looked, let's say, distracted. But despite of all that negative stuff, the stats, the reports, and what people say, I have to say, it kind of feels different here than most troubled cities I've been to. It feels run down, but kind of authentic. Like something that was bad once had changed. It's definitely unique. It's kind of like somebody picked up Alabama and stuck it in the mountains. I have to say, it's kind of my kind of place. A lot of people in Clear Lake voted for Democrats in the latest election. Wait, what? Most poor white people vote conservative, Mappy. Maybe it's because we're in California. California should be its own country. They could call it Nutsylvania. Maybe that's just mean. Why don't you go on and jump in that lake? Let us know if your eyeballs fall out of your head. Hey! So earlier I talked about the issues they're having with the lake in town. Not only is the water contaminated and dangerous to swim in, the water levels are dropping. And apparently, this is really sad, a lot of old artifacts have appeared in the mud. You know, spears and tools and keys to the past. 
<laughs> well, the town tweakers have been out here in the mud looting them. <laughs> they say they take their meth and then they go out here and dig around in the mud for hours. They find that appealing. But you got to do what you got to do to support your habit, I suppose. Damn. Now, a lot of this is because of a loss of jobs. There were mines here that closed a long time ago, and a lot of people had relied on those for their income. And words out among tourists about the quality of the lake water and the decline of the community. So a lot of the tourism jobs are literally drying up. I hear Lake County has a 20% unemployment rate, and that's the highest in the state. There just aren't a lot of professional jobs in town. I guess if these people were motivated, they could drive an hour to Santa Rosa. But these don't look like professional jobs type people to me. There's plenty of agriculture jobs in the area. But supposedly one in three people here doesn't even have a car. And gas prices are a real bitch. Growing weed is a huge deal up here. I guess a lot of people up here just make their income growing pot. I hear they're trying to improve this place. They're trying to get the homeless people here off the streets, and they say they've paved some of the town's roads. I reached out to the mayor and a city council member to see if they'd talk to me, and was basically like, Clear Lake has a bad reputation, but I kind of like it here. Can you talk to me about this? The mayor, Dick Sluton, asked me, Where have you heard Clear Lake has a bad reputation? <laughs> I was like, uh, it's all over the internet. There'll be one person that's like, Clear Lake gets five stars. It's a wonderful town for a family. And then the next person's like, it's full of drug addicts and filthy water. There's meth camps all along the shores. And do not leave your kids alone. And if you stay at a hotel, come well armed. <laughs> oh, there's more. This lady says, it looks like the set of a horror movie to me. Like they lure vacationers there and then they kill them. And the one sheriff is in on it. This guy says it's full of heavily tattooed people. Okay, so up. Uh, okay, here's another one. I've done volunteer work in Oakland and Appalachia, and this is the saddest town we've ever been to when it comes to a squandered environment and human condition. If you're looking to study environmental justice, drug addiction, or criminal rehab, make a beeline to the shores of Clear Lake, as it's a perfect case study for these dark sides of life. The county could use your ideas to solve this tragic compound problem. Jesus. Now, here's a little perspective. Okay, so about 50 miles away is the city of Napa. To get there, you drive through rolling hills and vineyards. It's all really beautiful country. Everyone's heard of Napa. It's known as a posh place with fancy wineries everywhere. It certainly feels a lot different here than over the hillside in Lake County. But they have issues here as well. There's homeless people all over Napa. They're in the bushes, in the parks, on the sidewalks. And all of this is just a block away from Napa's fancy shopping district. I saw way more homeless people here than I did in Clear Lake. There are probably many opinions on why that is. Check this out. I was in Napa walking around recording. And this guy saw me. And he did not like that. Watch. Here you can see him pull a weapon out and come after me. I don't know what weapon he had, but he insisted that I come over to him. And if you know anything about the homeless, you know how unpredictable they are. I held my ground and he realized it would be a big mistake to mess with me. He left me alone. But I thought I'd have that sort of problem in Clear Lake. I didn't feel that vibe at all there. Did I miss something? I also saw a lot of RVs and campers in the Napa parking lots. Not sure if these are homeless people or just travelers trying to save a buck. Maybe both. I know, up here in Clear Lake, they have a lot more to worry about than a bunch of homeless stragglers in town. They got a real mess on their hands. But again, is this just like the game of telephone we all played as kids? When somebody starts a rumor and then it just goes from there? Is Clear Lake's reputation undeserved? When I was in Sacramento the day before, I told a bartender that I was heading up here as part of a road trip. She was like, why? 
I'm from Lake County and Clear Lake is a terrible place. I told her that's why I'm going there to see if it's true. She seemed very confused. I too am confused. Is this a bad place? I mean, looks to me that most of these people are just living their lives out in the country. They're not rich and the infrastructure is terrible. There's health problems and a big drug problem. But seems to me it's just a bunch of good old NorCal country folks living in the middle of hick meth land. It's definitely a far slower pace than most of the rest of the state. But you don't have to worry about shootings, politics, smash and grabs, homeless tents on sidewalks, riots. There are far worse places to live in California than this. I think a lot of these people would rather live here than in LA, San Bernardino, and Oakland. And I don't blame them. So you had a chance to visit Clear Lake? I did. Yeah, I, I did a big road trip in, uh, in California. And um, I'd heard about Clear Lake. It's very famously known in California. Um, a, a lot of what I had heard was very bad stuff. And, um, I, you know, I, got, I went there and I didn't get that feeling and so I, when I reached out to you, I said, you know, hey, Clear Lake has a bad reputation. I kind of like it. Um, it's, it may not be a city that a lot of people would like. I, I like it there. Um, and you had mentioned that you guys have done a good job of, of cleaning up the reputation, making Clear Lake better. Um, what have you guys done? What, I don't have any familiarity with Clear Lake um, before. I know Clear Lake yeah. now. Well, you know, there's a lot to like about Clear Lake. Um, and, and it did have, there was a time, I think, about 10 years ago, where it went through a, a tough period, um, really around kind of the 2008 crash. Um, you know, it, it really impacted this area, I think, more than other areas in, in California. Um, and as part of that, crime went up. And, and because we're a small town of only, you know, 15,000 folks, a couple of extra blips on the crime radar make our numbers pretty pretty significantly skewed. Um, so that was something that we were dealing with. There was also some financial issues and, and, um, and, and some other things that we had to take care of. So um, I think, you know, you were here, so you got a, a feel for the area. We are this, this small little city nestled between mountains, lakes, giant uh, national forest. It, it's, it's pretty isolated but it still has that kind of small town community feel, which I think is probably something you felt when you were, you were here. So being that we're a bit isolated, um, we struggle with generating a lot of really high job producing industries, right? We're really limited to agriculture. We're limited to tourism. We're limited to a couple of you know, retail and a, a couple of smaller industries that, that could potentially flourish here. So when, when the nation is hit with a recession, it, it really, it hurts a town like Clear Lake more than others, in my opinion. So we couldn't spend our way out of this issue. We have to be really strategic on how we approach the challenges that we have as a community. And, um, you know, what long-term steps can we take to actually make significant improvements? And, you know, I wasn't here uh, when some of these steps were first taken. So there might be some other folks, I don't know if you're talking with anyone else that might have a little bit more historical context. But I think for us, the big focus was around safety. It was around economic development. It was around housing and it's around education. Um, you know, the safety was was the big thing. Like we talked about those, those uh, crime numbers is what, gave Clear Lake kind of an infamous uh, persona. You know, over the last six years, we have gotten crime down to an all-time low. We've rebuilt our police department. We've invested in training and morale. Um, we have a, a fantastic chief uh, of police here who brought a lot of really new technology to our department to allow us to do things like code enforcement better, to uh, equip our, our police officers with body cams and in-car cameras uh, so that um, there's transparency in all in everything that we do. So that was a piece of it. Like I said, now we have property crime at really an all time low. Um, part one crime, which is a combination of violent crime and property crime is incredibly low right now compared to the historic highs that we're at before. Um, then like drug use, has that been? Because I mean, ever, ever, if you talk to people, 
they they think Clear Lake is a is a meth head, drug infested place with junkies and all la la whatever. Um, I've been to those places before. Um, I didn't actually talk to people. I didn't see a lot of people outside. I drove around for a long time. Um, I didn't get that vibe. Is that because you guys have clean, cleaned all of that up, or is that still a problem? I think we've done a lot of, of good work in that space. I think, you know, drugs and homelessness is, is sort of an issue that this entire state is grappling with. And we certainly have some issues with that, but we've also taken some significant strides. We opened Hope Center recently, which uh, is uh, a facility that houses folks who are, are seeking assistance. Either they have addiction problems or, or looking to bounce back from homelessness and, and we offer programs through there. The county's done a great job with this as well. Um, you know, it, being, being I, we, we certainly haven't solved that problem. It's, it's a problem that our residents face and, and it's something that we're trying to work with. I think the best way to, to, to solve that is really through economic development. And if we can bring good paying jobs to this area, however we can do that, whether that's through agriculture, retail, um, that's going to help lighten some of the burden. Mm -hmm. um, are people in Clear Lake, uh, are, are they aware? Do you hear people say, God, this place was so much worse 20 years ago. Um, it, there's a significant difference now. Do you ever hear that or in the community? You know, we're hearing it more and more. Um, progress takes time in a community of this size. Um, and so, if you're if you're here every day, you, you can see the you might be able to see the incremental change, but you don't necessarily notice it. Um, you know, we when we talk about crime, we put out a survey recently um, around community safety, and we found that two thirds of residents who have been here for over two or over seven years are noticing that the city's a lot cleaner, the city feels a lot safer. Yeah. Well, I have traveled through California a lot. I'm from there. Um, there are far worse places to live in California. Um, and, and a lot of them are the big cities that uh, um, get a, a lot of worldwide reputation as being wonderful places to live. I'm talking about Los Angeles and San Francisco. Um, even San Diego is having a huge problem right now. Um, the Central Valley, a lot of those cities are kind of... So I... Um, uh, I'm, I'm glad it's good to see that a small community in California has actually taken some initiative to get some stuff cleaned up and working on it because some of these big cities, they don't have the ability to do that. They don't have the community spirit and the, and the roll up their sleeves attitude. It's just the, the cities are so ruined that they can't do that. So good for you guys for, for turning things around. I hope you continue to do it because I think that part of the state's the best part of the state. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, you know, I, I, would, I moved up here in 2017, um, and that would be, you know, a few years after Clear Lake was at the lowest of its lows, and I was attracted by uh, the hiking, the vineyards. Um, there's just the boating. There's, there's so much to love up here. Um, it, it, you know, if, if you love a big city, this might not be the feel for you, but if you, you like a small town sandbox where you can really do anything you put your, your mind to, this is the place to be. I think a lot of people are going to see this. And they could be like, I want to move there, man. Like, <laughs> uh, I'm not kidding. Uh, if you would just want to just live in like a rural state, leave me alone. I'll just do my thing. Uh, inexpensive lifestyle and just kind of kick back and, and you can kind of almost semi retire and you need some land, some cheap land and beautiful views. Um, it's, it's there. <laughs> well, come on down. I'll, I'll happily give anyone a tour. Yeah. All right, guys. So right now we're talking to my new friend, Miguel, who I reached out to. Uh, he has a YouTube channel and uh, he had a lot of videos that were about Clear Lake. And um, you've been in Clear Lake for a few years now. And I think the first thing I said to you when, when we talked was, you know, Clear Lake has a bad reputation, all the metrics, everything. But when you're there, it's, it's actually not that bad a place. No, absolutely not. I mean, like I said to you, I... I think that's the best thing about it is a lot of people do think it's a shitty place. I know it's probably not a great thing to say, but in my opinion, you know, a lot of people don't like it out here and say a lot of bad things, but there's nothing horrible to me. And I've really enjoyed being out here. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you told me that you'd rather live in Clear Lake than the Bay Area uh, oh, and, yeah. and most of the rest of California. What makes it better in Clear Lake than Oakland, Los Angeles, the real mm. dumps of California? I think the fact that it's a smaller area, so you're not going to really get away with as much. Sure, there's, you know, crap going on everywhere, but the other areas, you're really going to deal with it a lot more. It's the same thing anywhere you live, pretty much. You know, you have to lock your stuff down no matter what. And out here, being that it's a small place, uh, you know, I know all my neighbors. My neighbors all know me, and we keep an eye on stuff. So uh, living in the other areas, I didn't even know who my neighbors were. They would literally didn't know who, who lived, you know, the door that was, uh, say, a foot away from my door. I had no idea who those people were. Out here, we all know each other, and uh, we, we kind of take care of each other. So I think that's the, the better thing for me living out here is a little bit more quiet and, um, you know, that part that not a lot of people like. Everybody kind of knows everybody and, you know, not really in your business as much, but we kind of all know each other out here, and it's kind of oh, a little bit harder to get away with things than in the city where they just disappear. Somebody smashes your window and they're gone. You don't know where they are, who they are, you might stand a chance of getting your stuff back here. Yeah, that's the thing about smaller communities is it's hard to get away with shit because everybody's going to know who done it. I mean, everyone's got cameras. Everyone's mm -hmm. aware. Uh, everybody gossips and talks about what's going on in those little community watches and stuff. Um, and so I'd imagine it, it, there's it's just a much more tight-knit community up in a place like this. Yeah. Um, where everybody helps each other, but you know, I get it clearly does have issues. What are, what are some of the problems that are, I guess, um, accurate in terms of the, the reputation that Clear Lake has? Hmm. Well, there's just like everywhere that I've been in California, you know, there's drug use out here. There's a uh, homeless people out here. Not as much as, uh, the city though, not as much as the Bay area. There's actually, you know, there's homeless people out here and, uh, I think the one thing that is a problem out here that is definitely a thing is a, a dumping. You know, a lot of people like to litter and just dump large amounts of trash down streets that unfortunately there's no buildings down that block or anything like that. So there's dumping there. Um, the fires are, are a thing, you know, when the fires pop off, it's something that you worry about. And uh, the lake, lake absolutely for about a month or two, every, every year during the hotter months the the lake stinks so there's a smell coming off of the lake that's the algae it's just a natural thing and uh it's low water levels are low so we can't use the boat or do things like that and those are the hotter months that you really want to do something in the water um i mean there's not a lot to do there's no nightlife out here so if you if you like to go out and party uh past eight o'clock ten o'clock uh, that's not a thing out here you actually have to drive to go do that there's places to to do that but not in clear lake so the reputation then is it just that's how clear lake used to be and it's got better or is it just a case of word of mouth a lot of people just have decided that that's a bad place and and everybody has just run with that as an idea i think that uh my neighbors have told me people that have lived here you know all their life they they've said that you know during the 80s and the 90s it was really no joke so it was probably a lot worse than what, you know, my wife and I experienced. So to ourselves, you know, all the things that I've read online are kind of non-existent for us. I mean, sure, there's a problem I'm not saying that it never happens to anybody, but, you know, it's uh, not as harsh as it seems and definitely not the way that used to be from what I can tell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the poverty numbers are through the roof and the unemployment numbers are through the roof. The drug numbers are through the roof. The health uh, metrics are terrible. And they then are. you add on to that, the lake has a reputation as being polluted and, and not where it was at one point. Um, but to me, I feel like that seems to be all those problems that, that might exist there, the drugs, the health problems. Um, maybe and the poverty are, are contained in, in individual households and don't look like they're a, a problem that is part of the community. It's just like a typical, it feels very, very conservative, even though it's not really in terms of everybody just leave each other alone and do their own thing. Yeah. Um, 
it just seems like a place where everyone just kind of keeps to themselves. Like, do your drugs. If you want to be poor and you want to do your thing, just stay out of everyone's way and do that. Yeah, stay in my backyard and it's fine. Stay off my property and it's good. I mean, that's how it's been for us. I, I grew up in New York City in Brooklyn during the 80s and 90s. And, you know, it's nothing out here compared to that. It, this is fine. And everybody kind of knows we keep an eye on it. And sure, shit happens. I'm not trying to say that, oh, it's the best place in the world. It happens. It happens to people. But as far as us, luckily, we've never had anything happen. Our block is really quiet. Like I said, we all keep an eye on each other. So it really works out. And I, I don't know why there's such a stigma other than the original view of it during the 80s and 90s, from what I can tell. A lot of people that have never been to California don't know about the Northern California uh, redneck conservative culture that goes on up there most of northern california is, is like clear lake um, yeah you've got these small communities that are kind of conservative where people kind of do their own thing um some parts of california want to secede from the rest of california and i don't blame them but <laughs> um to be honest that's like my favorite part of california is once you get past the bay area you get past sacramento all that up there is beautiful the people are, are genuine and down to earth um it's too bad that they have to be connected to the rest of the state no, I, I, I definitely hear you. I can't I can't disagree with that. You know, there's a voting wise, uh, the county, I'm pretty sure, has gone Democrat for quite a while. And it's as you said, it's still a conservative type place that you drive around and you can see that. But uh, everything pretty much north. And we when we do go out, you know, you're, you're a short drive away from the Mendocino coast. You can go out there. You can go through the Redwood Forest. There's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Once you do get to that northern part i think it's it's great we spent a lot of time we were down in mojave for a while and i still love the desert as well it's just something that i you know i enjoy you you were at slab city in your past video and these, those are all places that are really cool as well they have different things going for them but i do like the northern part of california it, it's pretty much beautiful everywhere you go and there's a different feel to it than the southern california they're like two different complete states in my opinion I wish I had time to go all the way up into Northern California and spend a week and show everybody what it's like up there. I think I need to definitely go back and everything from like independence and mammoth all the way up to like why um, Redding. I mean, there's a lot of trashy places up there, uh, Crescent city. There's a lot of drugs and a lot of, a lot of bad stuff, but it's just so different from the rest of the state. Cause most people are used to seeing like big cities and, liberal stuff and um, yeah. palm trees you're, and mansions. You're either at Berkeley or you're on the beach surfing, right? That's the only two things yeah. that happen in California. Yeah. <laughs> Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you. I'm not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.